Excuse me, my dear, I don't give a damn. You're gonna need a bigger boat. He's looking at you, kid. In 1962, Harry Saltzman and Albert Broccoli kicked off 007's big screen career with production of the film Dr. No, and introduced the world to one of the greatest cinematic heroes of all time. Bond. James Bond. The film itself is decent, it's mildly thrilling, it's relatively humorous. What gives? Me, given an ounce of encouragement. And it's packed with fascinating art direction. The mid-century modern 1960s are alive and well in the form of sets and props, all created by the legendary production designer Ken Adam. Everything from Dr. No's ominous holding cells, to the bold, brightly colored technology interfaces, to the outfits which are sometimes just downright goofy. But what makes Dr. No important is that it paves the way not just for the remaining Bond films, but sets up a whole array of what are now considered classic standard spy movie tropes. It's got trips to the exotic locations, a swanky dinner meeting with the villain in which they discuss the entire evil scheme, and my personal favorite, the climactic countdown sequence held in the cavernous underground hidden lair, complete with our antagonist calling out orders to his horde of minions. And it's not just a good espionage film. It's got just about all of Bond's typical conventions as well. There's appearances from most of the major side characters, including Money Penny, CIA agent Felix Leiter, and Bond's superior officer and leather door aficionado, M. There's the wild opening title sequence, a card game held at a luxurious hotel, the barrel sequence, and of course the Bond girls. So in spite of all of those spectacular aspects, the film is still really only mediocre. The overlit, underdirected film is plagued by stiff acting, partially due to sometimes awkward writing. How did it happen? And the dated action seems slow and clunky compared to today's standards. But honestly, I can't really fault them for that. As we find down the road, Bond will eventually evolve into a more substantial character who develops from movie to movie, but for the time being, Sean Connery's Bond remains a two-dimensional ultra-suave secret agent, 